sitting here thinking, you know, I never shoot at night. It's hot. Summer is here. So I decided to come outside. And just as I came out, a storm started blowing in. I mean, it was clear a minute ago. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to mind your own. Well, it hasn't thundered yet, but it's blowing in. Come on, Sadie girl. Stay with me, Sadie. My garbage can. Look at that. Wow. You okay, Sadie girl? I'm gonna put you on a leash just in case we get big thunder. I don't need to. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Thunder. How awesome is this? I love thunderstorms, especially because it's cool. the. This is like the, I don't know, a week in a row. Every night I get a thunderstorm and a little bit of rain, and it's nice because it cools it off, makes it awesome for sleeping. I love thunderstorms. I know a lot of you guys get them all the time. I got them growing up, but. Not so much living in the San Francisco Bay Area. At least not at first. With the weather changing, we've gotten them the last few years. Sadie's doing great. We've had a desensitizer lately. Look at it, it's constant. Okay, Sadie? <laughs> okay, let's go in. I don't know. You okay? You doing okay? You doing all right? I think you are. I think you're good. I think you're good. <laughs> Not so much, huh? She's been hyper all day. Okay, hang on, hang on. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and watch the rest of it. That was awesome. So I'm um, at Camping World in uh, Rapid City. I'm looking for a new sewer hose. I bought a sewer hose at Walmart, a uh, replacement one, and it's really bendy and it's got holes in it already. It's not even that old. Aaron Day. Oh, this is nice. Do I have I have a rocker? It's a pain in the butt though to fold up and unfold, but it works. Okay. I've been looking for something to just kind of sort my mail. I don't know. That might work. It's kind of heavy. I need new faucets, especially in my kitchen. I don't know if you can see, but this is the soft vinyl, 18 mil vinyl cover. This is what, because of the way I cram it in, I guess, it got holes in it. So 
so I want the hard plastic. I don't need 15 feet. So they have a 10 foot. That's the cheapest too. 25 bucks. All right, that's what I'm gonna get. You know what, and I don't need this. I'll put it back. We're all set. New uh, hose and new, um, something's leaking. Oh, it's my air conditioning. And new um, paint treatment. And they have a dump station. Most camping worlds um, have dump stations and propane, so this is awesome. And I love these when they already have the hose, so all you have to do is hook it up yourself. And they have a dumpster so I can throw away my old hose. This is awesome. Awesome, I love it when I can fill two birds with one, kill two birds with one stone, or fill. <laughs> All right, I am gonna go to the co-op next. What I've been telling you It's nothing like it seems It's what I've been telling you Oh, you'd learn what I mean If you can't But the risk are you So I'm going to go back up to where I was and it's higher elevation. It's like at least five to six degrees cooler and uh, it's going to get cooler on Thursday. Today's Monday. So I'm just going to sit put, stay put, just sit for, ride it out in the coolest place I can find. There's no sense of going and making myself miserable. So um, I'm going to go back up where I was. There's a beautiful river along the way and Sadie's hot. So we're, um, there's some picnic areas. So I think I'm going to stop and just kind of enjoy the day. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. GPS signal lost. Uh oh. In the middle of Rapid City. What? We only got a lot done today, didn't we? We did. I see a cookie store. I love cookies. I love 
this name, Plato's Closet. I've been like up and down this road like 10 times. I was thinking one of these days I could get smart and plot out in a town all the places I want to stop so that I can do them in the most expeditious order, like, you know, according to geography. Instead of going to the this place and then all the way across town to go to this place and then, oops, I gotta go this and go all the way back across town. I do that all the time, but partly, you know, I was thinking, no, nah, that wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> um, this way I get to see parts of town I may not normally see if I'm always like point A to point B. But I seriously have been on this road like five times. By the way, the town I'm going to is literally called Nemo, N-E-M-O. So try it right now. Say, okay, Google. I won't do it while, this, while the camera's on. Navigate to Nemo. And they actually tell you I can't find Nemo. <laughs> Seriously, do it right now. <laughs> yep. So I had to say Nemo, South Dakota. And then Google led me there. But yeah, that's really funny. I kind of had a feeling too. I was like, Nemo, that's a weird name. And I'm like, Google, try to navigate to Nemo. And I knew it was silly. Like I knew, I don't know, you know, find Nemo. I thought about that. I don't think I knew that they would say I can't find Nemo. Anyway, I got to drive by. That's a big old something plant. Doesn't look open though, maybe. An old feed thing, an old feed mill. Grain, oh wow, it's huge. No, maybe it is still operating. I know, we're gonna go swimming. You wanna go swimming? There she goes. Sunk in the mud. <laughs> what you gonna do? Maybe. Why don't you come over here? Look, you can swim over there. <laughs> I, you didn't like that so much. Okay, you're making it cold. That was deep. She didn't. Are you okay? Are you okay? Ear, Sadie. What happened? Did you break your ear? She got water in your ear, I bet. Did you, did you break your ear? Come on, look it, you can come right here. No, she, this is, <laughs> come here, this isn't deep. Oh, she got that crazy look in her eyes. Hey, look at me, Sadie. Oh, she's a mess right now. 
Hey. Right back at it. She's like, I'm not scared, Mom. <laughs> Why don't you come over here? It's not deep over here. So if you didn't want to go moseying around the National Forest looking for dispersed camping, this actually isn't too bad. It's right on the river, too. Except it is. Sorry, that was fast. The road is right there. So you can hear the road. Probably hear the road over the river. Come on, Sadie girl. The feel in the river is really low this time of year. For this time of year. Middle of May. No, middle of June. I mean, you can see the dry, you can see where it has been in the past. And now it's just pretty small. I think this is a great way to end a long day of errands. Laundry, shopping, dump tank, new hose. I mean, I did a lot today. This is nice. The water feels really good on my feet. And it is cooler up here. Nice. Who knows why the curtains fly to catch the evening breeze? Without you here to keep me warm, believe I'd rather free. Believe I'd rather free. Tuesday night, it's 3 a.m. I ought to be asleep. If only I could tell you all about the dreams I keep. Or about the dreams I keep. I wake up every morning and I'm wasted all the day. I turn it all around if I could only hear you say that you were here to stay. Sky said the winter time is coming on, and you cry to see a shadow, babe. It's growing long across the line. Another song. So I'm in Nemo. The first night I was here, I stayed at a spot that freecampsites.net free publishes, and there were people there, and I went a little further out, about a quarter mile down the road, and I found a spot away from the people. But then I had to go into town the next day to get mail and do laundry, and uh, came back, and I was like, eh, I'm going to try something different. There's a nice, huge cell tower in Nemo, so the internet huge strong powerful so the internet around nemo if you're not blocked is really good so i went a different direction went out a different forest road and it took me a little while i went out i came i went down a forest road and then it forked it went to the left to the right and straight i went straight the first time even though it was uh the worst <laughs> road i think and i went up it it was it was rocky and yeah it was it was steep just a little bit though but anyway uh went all the way out that a couple miles couldn't find anything so then I came back and came out this one, and I was just about ready to give up. I was just about to turn around right up there by the wood pile and uh, said, you know, I'm going to go. Looks like it might be a better place to turn around up there, and I found an awesome spot to camp. The road dead ends. I mean, it's barely a road, and it does dead end. And even down at the junction, it says dead end. So 
I think I'll be fine. I'm only going to be here a few days. I won't be starting any fires. There is a fire ban, I think, in all of South Dakota, but at least in the Black Hills National Forest. I've been seeing signs since Wyoming, no fires in South Dakota. I haven't seen clearing piles like this since I camped in the National Forest in California. They do, there's a lot of clearing that they're going on out here, preventative from, uh, you know, out of control wildfires. I think South Dakota is one of the states. I was looking at a weather report the other day. Well, I think South Dakota is one of the states that's been in pretty severe drought for a couple of years. They're trying to preserve Black Hills National Forest. No fires. Even though it's rained every night, I think, since I've been in the Black Hills, which is, I've been in the Black Hills on both the Wyoming side and the South Dakota side, on and off. No, I think on different spots, but pretty much for the last week, maybe. And uh, at least the last four or five nights, it's rained. It's been awesome. Thunderstorms roll in and it cooled it right off. Oh, it was beautiful. So that's been nice. Not a lot of rain though, a little bit, mostly. And one night I had um, a lot of dry lightning, which of course is really bad. And one night, where was I? In Wyoming. Oh my gosh. Just out of nowhere, the biggest thunder boom out of nowhere. I jumped and screamed, Sadie freaked out. We're getting better about thunder. I've been uh, desensitizing her to that by when she doesn't bark when it thunders. Every time she, so she was barking when it was thundering, kind of freaking out like what's going on. And when she would come to me and sit and not bark, or at first I had to go up to her and she would go, ruff, ruff, ruff. so in between barks, when she's calm, you treat her. That's how you train her that not barking is good. And um, so now she's better. But that boom that night, oh my God. It, I mean, it was, it was crazy. Big, huge boom. And it was thunder. Actually, now I'm thinking, was it something else? But it was thunder because I could see clouds, big, dark, heavy clouds rolling in. But that was it. One big boom. No more. Maybe it wasn't now that I think it had to be. It shook the ground. But no more, no rain, no lightning, no more thunder. It was very strange. I forget what it's like to live in uh, thunderstorm country. <laughs> and I love it. I love thunderstorms. Look at this spot. <laughs> Beautiful, huh? Girl, you waiting for me? Oh, look at all this. Oh, man. Excellent fire starter. <laughs> oh, and it smells so good. <sighs> now I'm never going to be able to get it off my fingers. What else is pitch good for? I'll have to go look it up. I'm never going to get off my fingers now. So this is pretty much our routine. I have a cup of coffee, play with Sadie a little bit, go for a walk. This morning I was smart enough to put my uh, hiking shoes on because I always end up going further than I think I'm going to go. I'm like, I'm just going to meander around camp for a little bit and then I'll go for a bigger walk later and I end up going a mile or two in my Crocs. <laughs> uh, and I knew I wanted to explore this this morning. And then, uh, so it's about, what time is it? Not even nine o'clock yet. I usually get up around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And Cassidy makes me. And uh, I've been writing. So usually before I get to work, I write for at least an hour. Not every day. I was at first, but with travel and work and everything, I don't necessarily have time to travel every, to write every day. Uh, and then I'll work Sunday. So I started a video yesterday and I need to get it finished today. I'm in a spot where my internet signal is really good, so I don't have to get it done super early. It'll load fast enough. And uh, it's a, 
it's a travel video about being in the forest, so it's going to take me all day to do, um, plus what I did yesterday. So that's my work day, and I probably won't get done until 5, 6 o'clock. By the time I post it, I'll answer some comments. Usually I'm on for a half hour or so after I post it, just to make sure, um, you know, you guys will tell me if there's any glaring problems with the video. So I usually tune in for that, answer patron comments, and... Then I just settle in, relax. Somewhere in there I'll make dinner too. Actually, I've been eating twice a day. I'm still do I'm back on my intermittent fasting. So around eleven I'll eat either oatmeal or my uh, either buckwheat or quinoa pancakes. And then around three o'clock I'll eat again. So it took me a while to kind of get back into a system that's working. So around three o'clock I'll eat again. Uh, and then I just kind of snack until five or six o'clock because I like to, I snack a lot. I show you guys all the healthy food I eat, but, um, you know, I do like to snack. I like my sweet and salty and all kinds of stuff. I made a coconut cream pudding a couple nights ago. So just a can of coconut cream, a couple tablespoons of cocoa powder, a little bit of a uh, uh, teaspoon of vanilla and little bit of agave syrup, just a couple tablespoons, didn't take much, and mix it up and put it in the fridge, and it's a, a delicious, amazing, creamy pudding. It's really good. So I made that, and for dinner, I made a quinoa, kind of a quinoa bowl, quinoa, chickpeas, tahini dressing, and uh, all the vegetables I have, basically, broccoli, onions, kale, um, red peppers. I think that's it. So yeah, that's my day today. Wait, wait, don't pull please. Whenever she pulls, we're supposed to just stop until she gets slack back on the leash. So they're supposed to know by the tension in their collar when enough is enough. <sighs> and you're never supposed to let them get away with pulling, which is impossible because she pulls all the time. See, there she goes. So let's wait for her to back up. There we go. They're slack in the collar so we can go. Hey, here we go. Finally. This looks familiar. I did a big loop. I walked up here yesterday to where these tire tracks end. So I just did a big loop. And now I know where I am. All right. Oh, my Sadie girl. Oh, is it that black and white bird that's doing that screeching? You know, somebody out there knows what that is. I'm not sure if I showed you. I put 
put command hooks outside to hang my solar panels when I want to hang them. And it's on this side because this is uh, where the sun sets and where it stops hitting the top. So at the end of the day, when I stop getting optimal solar on the roof, I put this out and it bumps it right up. It's when I need it the most. My computer's been on all day. I don't think I've had enough coffee yet to talk. <laughs> gorgeous here. Absolutely gorgeous. See, he likes it. I think she seems to be learning. At least. Maybe not. She has no energy in the heat. None at all. Which is kind of nice, but it seems like she's learning that right now it's cool. So it's time to be hyper. <laughs> How's eating, girl? What you doing? Well, here's a tip for you. If you want to freshen up your linens, or like this is my bedspread, in between washes, because laundry sucks. <laughs> and usually every time I do laundry, I do everything, but I just wanted to get in and out the other day, so I didn't. And, you know, I live with a dog, and a dog sleeps with me. And that and she eats her bones and everything on the bed i try to lay down another blanket that i can just you know that that, that i don't sleep with but that doesn't always work so it, it kind of was smelling a little funky like bone just like meat like icky so anyway here's a tip put it outside spray it with white vinegar and let it air all day i did that yesterday and by the end of the day, it smelled fresh and good, and the icky smell from the Sadie bones were gone, and then last night it rained on it, so even better. <laughs> and it's almost dry again already, but that's a tip for you. If you want to just freshen up stuff, I'm telling you, white vinegar is good for everything. Uh, you can use apple cider vinegar, but with the apples in it, it, that can leave a residue depending on what you're doing. And if you don't have pets, you can also spray it with a little bit of essential oil. I usually like to spray it with like lavender or something like that, but you have to be really careful about essential oils because they can be toxic around dogs. But probably a couple drops of lavender. Lavender helps you relax. A lot of people use it for sleepy time. So a couple drops probably wouldn't hurt. White vinegar is fine, and it doesn't smell. You know, a lot of people are afraid to use vinegar because of the smell, but it evaporates really quickly. And it's good for cleaning. It's good for cleaning yourself. It's good for a lot of things. So that's my tip for freshening up your bedding in between laundry. So I put Reflectix on the outside of my windshield. I've never really done that before. I usually put it on the inside, but the morning sun is coming up right on the windshield and anything I can do to not warm it up inside. I mean, it's pretty cool in there from overnight. So anything I can do to keep that cool air in as long as possible before the rest of it heats up, the better. So if I can prevent the windshield from warming up at all by putting the reflectix on the outside, I think that's a good thing. And then I put um, command hooks up there as well. So in the afternoon sun, I seem to always park with this window getting the western sunset, which is where I work and it gets super hot. So I have these, these are quilt clips and they've got holes in them. So I just clip them on Reflectix and hang them up there. I also put a piece of Velcro on one side. I should probably do the other side uh, to hold it in, but because there's only one side, oftentimes the wind will just blow it off. But I didn't put it on this side because what I like is, I keep the window open, I like to let a little bit of the breeze in, especially if it's a cool breeze. So that's why I didn't Velcro down this side because I like to kind of fold it over and really only cover up the glass. What is that bird? Noisy sucker. <laughs> this is so funny. I've been at this spot for 
I don't know, long time, four or five days now. And I think this is my last full day, maybe one more day. And this is the only direction I haven't explored. A, a, a road that is basically just a clearing road up above my camp. I went in one direction the first day I was here and I hadn't gone the other direction. And I did this morning and there are houses behind me. <laughs> Here I thought this whole time that I was out here pretty far away. I could hear a road, and I looked on the map, and it was like half a mile away. But uh, a, a pretty main road from Nemo to somewhere. I can't remember where. And uh, so, yeah, the whole time I thought nobody was around for miles. Not even a quarter of a mile over the hill from my camp or residences. <laughs> so this is National Forest once you get toward the east, um, Midwest, east middle of the country wherever I am so uh here's a tip for you uh if you again want solitude and you don't want to go where everybody else is going by using the apps look on the map look for forest roads that go through you can look at google earth and you can see so I've said this before on the, the further east you get, the more private property there is in public lands because of grandfather clauses. So the east was already established when the country decided that we wanted to preserve some of our lands for everybody. And so they started gobbling up land where they could to protect resources and to protect it for, the, for us to use. And... In, in the middle of those, checkerboard you'll often see, is private property because it's been passed down from generation to generation. And eminent domain doesn't cover, you know, gobbling up private property for public lands. So, only for rich interests. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I can see the house. I don't know if you can see there's a building right through there. So anyway, once you get out of the west, let's just call it the west, and start heading east, one of the ways that you can find camping is by looking for national forests and you can use the apps I've talked about free roam US public lands in addition to using Google Earth and you can look and see okay there's a national forest but if I look here I see a clump of houses but does that national forest road keep going into public land you know or or into land where I can get away from residences and that's another thing you know if we want to preserve this for everybody as it gets more crowded out here, don't camp right in somebody's backyard, even if it is public land. I wouldn't want to buy a house and have people in my backyard constantly. So even if it is public land, I always try to stay away from residences. You know, basically I try to lay low. I don't, I try to just come out here, follow the rules the best I can and not, I, I really like to fly under the radar, be as invisible as I can be, you know, I mean, you know, I'm in a 24 foot class CRV, but I'm not going to plop two weeks right on the other side of a private property, you know, residence fence. So just be mindful about that. Just be mindful also that when you come out here, you're not the only one out here <laughs> and other people want to enjoy the lands. So respect them and respect the people who have property butting up against, um, public land so yeah <laughs> interesting you know and I oh Sadie went off chasing a deer one day and I was yelling at her yelling for her Sadie see just like I just did and uh thinking I was nobody else was around good girl and uh so anyway yeah that's my morning walk for you Sadie <laughs> this tree's not good enough for her so that's my morning walk and uh some some tips for you more boondocking tips, more RV living tips. And uh, especially, like I said, as I move east, it gets harder and harder. There's just not as much public land, and the public land that is there is broken up by private property. So you got to be careful. These big piles of trimmed trees, you know, thinning out around here make me want to build something. Like, I want a chainsaw. Look at, like, couldn't I do, sorry, see, I'm not on. See, like those, like, I want to build a table or something. Or slice them thin and la uh, laminate or lacquer them, stain them, make, make a floor out of them. 
just want to, and it smells so good. That's the main thing. I'd love to have this smell in my RV all the time. Someday when I live completely off grid and I'm totally self-sufficient, <laughs> I'll build stuff. All right, so I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me for five days in the Black Hills National Forest of South Dakota. If you enjoyed this, you're going to really love what's coming next, Badlands. And there's a lot more North Dakota, Minnesota, and more that's coming up. So be sure to subscribe below if you haven't already. Double check, make sure you're still subscribed and you're getting notifications. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free and be kind. I'll see you soon.